Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to create a horizontal nav bar with a pop-up screen tip. So on my HTML, I've got several nav menus created HTML-wise, but I'm going to be focusing my attention on this first one. Notice I'm using a set of nav tags with an ID attribute, and within that I've got the generic unordered list with a series of list items with some generic anchor tags, which means in my styling, I'm going to start to write things like this nav1. I want to style just that one. Background color, yellow green, height, um, 100 pixels. Could have done a min height there. That's kind of a nice way to go. Min height, 100 pixels. And how about a little margin? 8 pixels top and bottom, 0 pixels left and right. So now when I look at my web page, you can clearly see where that nav1 is. Okay, and remember, nav1 is my nav tag, and it's okay to put the tag in front of the ID select or the ID selector or the class selector, just no space there. Okay, cool, got that. Now I'm gonna go to that unordered list. In fact, I need to do it this way: nav1 space unordered list because I only want to style the unordered list within that nav1, and that's gonna have a number of things. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and put an outline on it that's two pixels solid and four, five, six, because I just want you to be able to see where it shows up. And you see that thin black line there. I'm gonna jump up to this nav one. In addition, I'll put a padding of eight pixels all around and you'll see now the unordered list is within that nav and you can tell by that border on there. Cool, feeling pretty good about that. And um, yeah, let's put a little padding on here of eight pixels. Now, in addition, I want to do list style type of none to get rid of any bullets that might show up on my list item. And I'm also gonna do a display flex. In addition to display flex to make it a flexbox parent, flex direction row, get some horizontal, even though it was gonna happen anyway, and justify content center to center those list items right in there. And that's exactly what I want. Now I think for this unordered list, actually let's just move right into the list items. Nav1 list items. And let's see, I will, um, let's set a min height. And eh, no, let's be specific. Let's do a height of something like 55 or just 50 pixels. I want it to be nice and chunky. Um, so that way if somebody was tapping on this with their finger on a phone. So we'll give it a height of 50 pixels. And let's do another outline. How about, um, two pixels solid and then 900 for a kind of a dark red. Now we can see them on there. Margin, eight pixels, get some space around them. Cool, looks pretty good. I'm feeling pretty satisfied with this. However, now I wanna to go to my anchor tags that are in there. Nav1 anchor tags and I'm gonna display block, set their width to 100%, set their height to 100%. I'm making these anchors into blocks and they're gonna fill up their list item parent. So now I can hover over anywhere within that red bordered list item. And let's go ahead and throw a little padding on these folks. How about um, eight pixels top and bottom and 24 pixels left and right. That'll make them a little more rectangular looking. Cool. In fact, I'm gonna increase that padding top and bottom so that I can kind of get them vertically centered in the space. All right, I'm satisfied with those anchor tags. Now I'm gonna jump down to the HTML and I'm gonna go ahead and just put in some span text with some generic lorem ipsum text. That's way too much, so let me knock that down. And I'll just work on this first one here and see how that works and then it can copy and paste to the other list items. Now this is gonna make your list item look pretty darn messy, so don't worry about that. We're gonna fix it up soon enough. So what I wanna do next is I wanna make sure that my list items are position relative. And then what that's gonna allow me to do is nav1 span can be position absolute. I'm gonna position absolutely based on the relatively positioned parent. So I'm gonna be positioning the span based on the boundaries of its parent list item. 
And as soon as I do position absolute, I like to put in something like top zero pixels, left zero pixels. Let's make sure we can sh see that span. Border, two pixels solid. We'll make it, eh, let's just make it uh, bright yellow. And I'll do a background color. It's RGBA. And we'll go uh, kind of a dark red. So let's do something like 140, comma, 0, comma, 0, comma, 0.7, semi-transparent. And now we're going to see, ah, that's where it is. And notice the top left corner of the span with the yellow border is being positioned within that list item. Cool. All right, well, I'll just adjust that positioning. I want to move it upward. I'm going to move it upward about negative 70 pixels. I'm kind of guessing at that number, but I'm using a little bit of logic based on the heights that I've picked for other things. I'm going to move it up a little more and a little more. Just want it to be above that list item. Cool, that looks good to me. While I'm here, I'm going to do a font size of nine points and a font color of, yeah, let's just do bright whites. So it'll really pop now when I'm looking at that span. Now, since I um, made that font a lot smaller, this didn't have to be quite so big. So let me go ahead and do this with that span chunk. Cool. All right. I'm pretty satisfied with that. And a little padding in there too. Okay. Now here's where the, uh, the magic really happens. I'm going to take that span, which I just styled, and I'm going to do display none. And that's going to make it disappear. However, nav1, let's scroll this up so you can see it well list item colon hover. When I hover over the list item, I want the span inside to display block. So now when I hover over that menu item, I get that little box popping up. Pretty neat. And if my other menu items had their own span text, there we go. Now when I hover over any of these, I'm going to get that little screen tip popping up. Yeah, so there we go. That's all it takes to make that little pop-up on some menu items. And of course, you could do this on other elements on your page, like abbreviations or images and stuff like that. But basically, we're positioning this pop-up based on its list item parent. Thanks for hanging out with me.